I just found out, man, that that you was one of the cats that that held Nas down. Nas, during, I love Nas during man. a difficult period of his life, man. Like, I didn't know you had a, a a strong relationship with Nas, Yo, and, and I just found out that you held him down during when his mom was passing away and that mm-hmm. whole like Jay Z Ether takeover beef, man. Yeah, Nas is n- number one. Let me just say this: I know Nas when we was recording um. When when I was in Power Play recording, and when he used to come around and be in the studio when Eric B. and Rock was in the studio, Nas is one of the best lyricists to ever touch the microphone in hip hop, and I'm I'm saying top three because his ability to put stories together, man. I mean, he got old rhymes that he ain't never said that a body a lot of these niggas whole albums. Like that's how dope <laughs> he is. He's dope. I went to his house one time. He lived in uh in Dix Hills in this big giant mansion. So I'm like, damn, look at this house, man. I was like, yeah, this house is crazy. So I walk in this house and shit. I'm looking. His beautiful mother was there, man, and I gave a hug and, and he and we, we went upstairs and he went into his room. Nas had a bed in his room and on his floor was books everywhere. And he was just picking through these books reading books he's a very wise cat a lot of knowledge man and i mean just he's, he's so humble his he's so humble that it, it makes you almost humble yourself you know what i'm saying because there's a spiritual thing going on with him too that people they ain't really don't really know either you know because i remember my mom's at that time of his, of his life when he was dealing with the whole battle thing I took him to see my mother, you know, and my mom's a very spiritual woman and she was she was going back and forth with him about the Bible and he was she was teaching him things about the Bible and he was going back and forth about the Bible and I was sitting on the couch snoring cuz I just had some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I know this already. Mom's been dealing with right. me from, from birth, but Nas is a wise dude. I mean, like he's wise beyond his years, like, you know, and I felt like to to me you know, we, we we went in the studio, we was working at the crib. We were just I was just rolling with him because I felt like I needed to be around him because he wasn't really rolling with nobody. I mean, he had his crew, you know, Jungle and his brother, and, 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 and they definitely didn't need me. Right. But, you know, I can remember being at when he went to Hot 97, you know, and, and they went upstairs and I was downstairs in the front, you know, with um. And I was, I was strapped and I was downstairs waiting for him to come down. But I was watching his back because he, he was we wasn't sure what what it was. Right. There was a lot going on. Because it was a time. lot because I didn't want to see another Tupac. Right. Biggie thing go down. And I know my man, Big Chuck, was rocking with Jay-Z. So I wasn't worried about nothing because I knew Chuck was rocking with Jay-Z is right. my this is my dog like this right. is you know what I mean this is one of my niggas and I'm one of his niggas is we rock like that so but you also knew he was on the other also side also knew he was on the other side right. but I trust him because I like this he this is a guy who I, I, I rock with like right. that but you know I seen it was crazy because I kind of I kind of seen a lot of things sneaky things going on you know I was, like like what just, just like, like when I went to Hot ninety seven one day, one night, I've seen dudes like it was cats that was around, that was around Nas that was like, you know, they was do, they was there, but they wasn't on point, point. Mm. You know what I mean? Some of them, some of them was on point, some of them wasn't on point. They, I don't think they, and I don't think it was for any other reason, other than they wasn't believing that it was that serious. Right. I don't think it was that they wasn't trying. They so wasn't they wasn't that for. built like that to be that alert. I don't know if they was like like I could say like there were certain dudes like I know Jungle is he he was always on his game, um, um, what's my man name the my the big dude the the brother the big dude horse horse my man horse was always on his game you know what I mean it was cats like that that was on their game you know but when you get like certain other cats that was around they was just you know. It was other cats around, you know, it was like that was on their game. But it was certain cats that wasn't in, in the normal right, crew right. that was not on their game. And I felt like, you know, Nas needs somebody to really, really watch. It. This ain't about rap fame and being on top. Nas needs somebody to really look out, make sure that he got a presence around him that that knows, like, if you shoot, we shoot him back. Or right. you don't get a chance to shoot, we shoot back. Right. I didn't want it to be that. But you know how this shit is. Yeah, I just thought outside And, and, that, and that beef was real 
primal beat. And radio was pumping it up. Yes. And it could have been fire. It could have it could have been Brooklyn versus Queens. Right. And it could have been I didn't want to see that. I wanted or it to Harlem be Harlem versus I mean, it was started getting crazy. Yeah, I wanted it to be I wanted it to be I wanted it to be um rhymes versus rhymes. Jay Z versus Nas. I wanted Nas it to be that because right. Jay is nice, Nas is nice, and, and, and I wanted it to be that. I didn't want it I didn't want to see Nas hurt. I didn't want to see Jay in the middle of nothing that right. caused him to be hurt. You know what I mean? That shit would have been whack, yo. What kind of conversations were y'all having during that that time? Wow, man, we just talked about a lot of shit. Um well we talked about approach, you know, to to to, to MC and in this battle shit at one point. Because you know. you're a skilled battle rap. You have yeah. a lot of battle. I mean, yeah. you fought, you battle with Kane. I mean, I remember telling, I remember saying to Nas, yo, you gotta, I said, yo, Nas, you better clown dude, man. Mm. Cause you can't, Nas is smart. You know, Nas, Nas is lyrically intelli- intellectual. He knows how to pin it. So he don't need nobody to write for him or tell him how to do it. But I just was like, he, everywhere we went, we ran into Tracy Morgan we ran at all the studios where I was going. You would see all these people coming around him. The kind of people that come around Nas, you would bug out when you say, oh, shit. Like, you know, we run into people and they're like, yo, you got to really get at this dude in right. a way that, you know, that really puts him, makes people. Because to me, the best battle MC is one that gets that crowd response when right. you say like like what, what Kane is good at, you know, you could be an intellectual, lyrical, irical, miracle, lyrical motherfucker all you want to. Right. That shit only works on records. It does not work on stage when you battling somebody. You need to have them every four bars. You got to, the crowd got, the music got to drop, the DJ drop the music, and the crowd got to go, oh, you, you, shit. You got to feed the savages. Got to feed them. Right. That's that, them punchlines. You need punchlines when you nice like that. You know what I mean? And Nas is, is, you know, both of them have the ability. Right. You know, so I didn't really tell him how to do it or I ain't really, t- I just kind of was giving him, you my, gotta clown him. my opinion right. on how I felt it should go. And whatever he listened to, he listened to whatever he didn't, he didn't. But he didn't need me to tell him anything because he knew where he was going to go with it. I just was there as moral support to right. say, yo, dog, I feel you on this. You got to do what you got to do. Just be sharp. I was like a, I was like a, in the background, like a assistant coach. Assistant coach. You know, just kind of saying you that. You had like the, the hand pads. Yeah, just be, you know, <laughs> I didn't, I, I'm not taking no credit right. for nothing. I'm don't, don't get me wrong, but Nas is my little brother, man. I love him, man. He's a, I like where he is with himself, like it was career now. You know, I, whenever he's an he, elder statesman, man. whenever he goes through shit, he knows how to pin it to to let the world see it like like I love that he did the daughter's record right, right. after if you look at what happened before that yes how he just took he lives his his music is his life man when he was a young kid coming to the lab he was the same way man he was very observant you know and and, and he was so very, you knew what type of cat he was before he even yeah yeah I mean listen look you know being around dudes like Large Professor and Cool G Rap and and you know how could you not be a lyricist right. how could you not you know like have your career cool G rap went from zero to 60 you. like that yes yeah like you it, it wasn't a struggle no like, y'all, it wasn't a struggle for y'all no. to get on we did it we did it because it felt good right we did it because we felt and I, and I never forget and and i and i and i i remember even like people that pushed us to the next level like you know your foxes mm-hmm. you know my cousin fed my brother anthony my brother john and people that pushed us to the next level i never forget Nas was in the studio working. He was a young kid. Mm-hmm. He just like rock him young, you know, young, thirsty, and he was spitting fire. And I'll never forget. And, and he, he will not take credit to it today. And I always remind him. I remember he was in the studio. We were going to work with him. And then rock him called me one day and was like, yo, E man, we got to get back to our day job. Right. You know what I'm saying? Forget all them kids in the studio. We got to get back to our day job. And you know what I'm saying? These guys, we're really, you know, right on our heels, right. you know, the Nazis, and these guys are coming up. Right. So we had to kind of separate ourselves and go into the next level. And I remember Rakim calling me and saying, E, man, you know, it's time for us to go to the next level. And, and that's what we did. And I always say, I'd say to Nas, he's the reason that took us into, and, and it's no disrespect to EPMD. We, Eric being Rakim could have been just the EPMD. Right. But Nas pushed us to the next, and there's nothing wrong with EPMD. I love their records. But we we wouldn't have had that legendary status if it wasn't for the younger guys like Nas and 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 different people right. like that. Special Ed, I right. remember Special Ed at the time was strong, and we had to All separate those ourselves. Records you know, from have the, they don't have the same vibe, 
but it's it got the same spirit. It's what all the, the right fuck? color paint to the picture? Bro. Yo, it just blends. Like what like, the that, fuck? That that happened magically. That the way that album came together. Was y'all niggas on drugs, was, man? Was, <laughs> was y'all yo, for real? Just, oh, just just beer. And some weed, and that's it, yo. And New York had bad weed back then. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't this good super, beer, fish, but super, good beer. super yeah. crazy high tech well, shit. They done, yeah, they done changed the weed up too today. Yeah, you know man. I mean? But like, nice. like, dude, yeah. like, yeah. Prof- large professor introduced you to Nas. Yeah. What did did you say? This kid is gonna be great, or this kid? You know, he, he got he got he got promise. Yes, I said that early when when I heard Back to the Grill again. Mm. You know the way he flowed and right. the, his voice On was so. Joint. Yeah, the, it, the the flow is what I pay attention to. Right. The flow, like the rhymes too, but the flow the over flow. the beat. Mm. You know, because I make beats, so you know I'm listening for that first. But then the rhymes at the same time is like makes Nas like the one of the greatest ever. Like to me, he's the best. Like. Mm. Over over a lot of motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm I'm you know I ain't you know no rider. I'm right. a rider, but I'm not a rider. No, nah, but we're talking, we're talking about greats. We're talking about true greats. true yes. talent of seeing this dude with just a bunch of books of rhymes never said. Like you know, like wow, what what could that song could have been? And, right. You know, did he have the words for this song for the world is yours? Did he have these words yeah, yeah, already written yeah. down? I think so. Did y'all discuss the concept of it? Yeah, or? He came up with the hook pretty fast. He came up with the hook. Yeah. He came up with that. Okay. Hook and made me sing it. Right. Yeah. But it sounds like you came up with that. hook. Nah, he did. Okay. He did. So he, he was, already had the thing. Yeah, formulated. He had the whole joint. Like, that's how talented he is. Now, did you go and make this beat specifically for no, Nas or well, did you have it already? I, I, had, I had it made. Like, you know, I was going through some disc and went and I had that one. You know, when I made that, I was like thinking maybe a Pete Rock CL record. Right. It was 1994, but we were, you know, just working on the main ingredient. Right. And, and I could hear, I could hear CL and you on that yeah, too, man. On the beginning of yeah. working on the main ingredient, I had some beats that I had worked on and I, you know, was going through them and, and you know, played that one. What's the first record you heard before you went in the studio? What's the first record you heard what, from Illmatic? What was the first record I heard off that album? Yeah, that you heard being made. It was like, you know what? I got to come. Well, all the large joints. All the large joints. Yeah, the thing ain't hard to tell. Right. Was like the one that was murderous to like, you know, all right, we got to come with it. Because did you hear that large joint? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, man, did you hear the primo joint? You know. I had to come with it. I remember the day that um LES, my man, LES yes. on the, on on Elmatic. Shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, skew tip. Yeah, I remember the day Elmatic came out. Yeah, and we were sitting um in Louise West's office. Mm-hmm. And you it, remember it was, Louise? It was it was Damon Dash. It was yeah. it was, it was uh, Super DJ Clark Kent mm-hmm. and some other cats. Mm-hmm. And we sat in that office mm-hmm. and listened to that album mm-hmm. and every producer in that every producer in that office was like yo i gotta go back <laughs> and and change because y'all you know yeah like, setting the president like I, i'm watching producers Man. like it's a whole different world i mean i don't even know the, how y'all think the level of, of thought that y'all think that album was well so well put together yeah every producer's like we got to change what yeah, we do it, it, i mean and then he was new Right, and, and he was it, and his rhymes were unheard of, and his voice was different, and yeah, you gonna win, you gonna win. Now, was there competition amongst the producers on that album? Like, yeah, I think so. We was all competing, and you know, who, who you competing with? Well, really? Primo was competing with me. He said when he heard "The World Is Yours," he went back and made um, uh, no, represent, like everybody represent, was, everybody right, was right, just right. like, this is a special thing. We all need to get in on this. Yep. And it was like it helps when you make good beats, but then you have this extraordinary MC who can bring your music over the top just by his golden voice and how he raps over music, man. You know, and the sing the the lyrics. You know, he talks about real stuff. You know, things in our environment that that we see, and um. Uh, you know, it, 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 and making the youth aware of, of, you know, going down a certain path in life and and his experiences in life, you know, and, and teaching kids, hey, this is a better road to go down. I went down this road, 
and experience this, this, and this. But, you know, his album was like, uh, I call it a scholar. I call his album Illmatic, like a, a, a scholar. It's like, you know, to me, it taught a lot of, of people, and, and not only kids, but just, you know, people of age as well, you know, what it's like to live in an environment where you see certain things going on, you know, all the time. You know what I mean? And your chance to want to get out and live a better life. You know what I mean? Did you feel like it was something special in the beginning? Like, did you go into the studio with him and think, this is something magical that I'm part of? Yeah, yeah, automatically. Because my peers who who produced alongside me with, you know, doing this Illmatic album, Q-Tip, Large Professor, myself, DJ Premier, and L.E.S., you know, like that's the starting Fab Five in hip hop. You know, for an album that was that became huge and successful, and you know, I'm just just lucky and happy to be part of that. Has, like, even any, if it's has just anyone one song. ever spit anything that yeah. made you go, "Oh man, I gotta go back and touch up something"? Nas, Nas, all the time. Yeah. Nas, like Nas is like you know, Nas, man, just always. But then I'm. I'm the type of artist that I am. And, you know, I, I know, like, we all have our own ways of doing things. So after a while, that, once I really embraced that we're making records now and, and their compositions and, and feelings and different feelings, like, you you know, I kind of broke out of that mold of hip-hop where it's like, yo, that's whack. Yo, that's you know, and yo, that's that kind of thing. Like I, I don't I don't go by that anymore, like because just expression is expression. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, nah, give that a minute and you might just love it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's so definitely like I'm you know, but nah, nahs, 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 man. Yeah, so um if you were not mind, mm-hmm. we'd love to talk to you about him and Illmatic yes. in particular. I was that kid who in the 90s was looking at the liner notes right. and I would see everybody's name and everything and I would see your name and like I would like slowly put two and two together yes. but I would also see the words Chung King yes. over and over and over again and I like would have imagined that this was this crazy place where all this yeah. wild shit was happening yeah. all the time is that true? Chung King was the place yeah Chung King was one of the places like Chung King the location of Chung King was great. The parking was great. Uh, the where was it exactly? The clientele was that Grand Street. It was like Grand Street at that time. It was like a uh, like a factory almost. Like I think they had the freight elevator or something like. So yep. it was like, yo, you going into some like where are we going right now? And then you get up there and there's all this hardware on the wall, all these shiny plaques and everything and. The thing I think that made uh, Chung King, I mean, besides being parking there and like that not being a crazy busy street, like there was always parking by Chung King, but the clientele, the clientele, it's like, yo, who's in the other room? Uh, yo, Apache, yo, brand Nubian, like, you know, search, like, you know, just the clientele, Cool J, old dirty bastard is in the other room, like it's, and then the camaraderie who's in the other room uh Buster Rhymes leaders of the new school so it was just like the the creme de la creme or like the the edge the cutting edge like real dudes were there so you know everyone having that mutual respect for one another you know you go in it's like yo what's up like I think uh I forgot who was in when uh when we were doing Nas and stuff but uh a few people like popped in like yo what's up man like yo just gonna sit down for a second and just like so it was that that was the thing that was dope about Chung King and it was it was never anyone that you you know cause sometimes that was a little like yo kind of you know kind of closed session right here <laughs> right now bro like not really <laughs> like that kind nah I was always someone that you like yo nah yeah man you know grab a seat kind of thing like that so yeah Chung King was dope Still is too. Still is. And so, how how much time did you spend in Chung King? You have you had three songs. Yeah. On Illmatic. How yeah. about how many days were you there? Was it always Chung King? Was it elsewhere? Yeah. No. Nah, I mean, we did a, we did a few sessions. Uh, Chung King. We did a 
few sessions at Unique. I mean, we were all over the place, power play, all kind of things. Like, yeah, yeah, we were just, we were just. I mean, because at that time, I was also kind of like on the production tip, just kind of out there, like, and just all of these studios, like, just everywhere. And so it was just anywhere. But Chung King is where we got started. Is where we got started. That was Nas's first session. That was his first session. Like we had been in on Eric B and Rakim sessions and power play and everything, and it was like, all right, cool. And uh, you know, we were kind of trying to do it. Like he would try to come prepared. You know, you have his little weed or something like that, and like, yo, I, right. you know, but he couldn't really spread out how he wanted to. Right. But at at the first session uh, at Chung King, like. He had the old wives. He had all the weed spread out, his notebooks. Like, he had everything prepared nicely and just, like, you know, and, the, and he was sitting back and he was like, all right, put it on the big ones right now. And, like, we put it on the big ones. He's like, now let me hear the small ones. Then. You know, all right, so, you know, like, he, he had it all, you know, he learned on 48 tracks. Like, that's what he was recording his demo on. Mm-hmm. So he knew studio etiquette. He knew studio etiquette. He's like, all right, well, how about, you know, <laughs> all of that. So that was good to see him on that. And he's like, oh, uh, where's the menu so I can order something now? And all, all that. So he, he was he was soaking that up. He was definitely soaking that up. And I, I was just happy to see that because I had seen, you know, to see something from, like, from day one, like, you know, to see him from day one and, and for him to finally get a shot and. You know, it was fitting for him, man. Like, he, he, he played the role great. Like, he was, like, right there. He knew what to ask for. He knew what to do. He's like, oh, I'd like to hear that on the big ones. And, like, yo, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, What about, like, the, the one, uh, the oratone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me hear it. Let me, can I hear the vocals on the oratone? And he knew the name of the speakers and everything. So that was cool. That was cool.